Good morning. We welcome everyone to this service of worship, members, friends, visitors, all who are here with us today. We are glad that you are here. Along with the Fairview friends of Fairview Moravian Church, we celebrate with a love feast service today. Wonderful tradition of our church signifying our unity in Christ and where all are welcome to participate. I do want to thank our band for the preludes that they play prior to the service, for our deaners and our coffee makers who have important roles, of course, in uh, the Love Feast service this morning. We would invite visitors and members if you have, as you have opportunity to sign the friendship registers that are at the ends of each of the pews, and please pass them down the pews so that everyone would have an opportunity to sign. A special thank you is extended to all who gave of their time, talent, and energy on Labor Day for a very successful police appreciation and family fun day that we had at our picnic shelter and activity build. Um, if you were here, you recognize what a wonderful turnout it was. We had estimates range from 150 to 200 people that were here and anywhere from 40 to 50 police officers that we recognize and thank for their service to our community. I think it was a grand day for Fairview. It was most appreciated by uh, the police officers who serve our community. This morning, we want to extend a welcome to our new student intern. She is Leslie Cock, and she is here with us today with her husband, Ross. And Leslie, would you please stand and let people see you? You can wave at her. She's waving at you all. Thank you, Leslie. I want to... Um, briefly tell you a little bit about Leslie, but as she will be with us uh, for uh, several months, you will get to know her, but we're excited that she's going to start her internship with us. She is an approved candidate for uh, the Moravian ministry. She is currently enrolled at Moravian Seminary taking online courses, and when we were talking this week, I understood that these are pretty difficult courses that she's taking, so she has a lot of uh, a good amount of time to spend reading and writing and in her studies, but she also, uh, as part of her in, as part of her degree, is to have an internship. Um, and DC asked us if we would be a teaching congregation for less. So on, on your behalf, I said yes, we would be. So uh, I continue to welcome her, uh, teach her, help her, and she has many gifts to share with us. She is a Moravian. Uh, she attends Fort Moravian Church. She has uh, taught Sunday school. She has worked with the Christian Education Committee. She has led worship, been a member of the Women's Fellowship there, and she has many things to offer. So we look forward to getting to know you, Leslie, and welcome Fairview Moravian Church as, as our intern. Glad to have you. Ross, we're glad to have you as well. Come back often, and, and we look forward to, to you both being we move to our prayer time now, and we bring before God the concerns and intercessions and prayers of thanksgiving of which we are aware. Among our church family and friends, we continue to pray for healing and strength for Bob and Billy Minish. Uh, Billy is here, and Billy told us today that Bob will be coming home from hospice home. will be coming home on Wednesday. So we want to pray for a smooth transition for Bob. Also, Bob Joyce uh, will be coming home on Thursday. He's been at Homestead Hills uh, Healthcare. Continue to play, pray, please, for Pam Tatum and Alden Dole, for Eileen Petticord, for Judy Snyder, uh, for Betty Fault. Betty is with us today, and we're glad. Also, uh, Nelson Cannon, I understood, uh, is going to have to have surgery again. So we want to pray for Nelson and the family. And then the family of Nancy Ann Reynolds. Nancy Ann passed away uh, Friday, and they were close friends with Alden and Anna Frances Dahl. We want to pray for all who are struggling, who are, have been hurt or feel distant from God. And we give thanks for the fact that God is continually uh, desiring to draw close to us and that he will never leave us. And also we pray for our country on this day for all who serve in our communities, particularly those who are our civic servants, our firefighters, our police, our emergency personnel. But we have much for us to be thankful as we remember the 15th anniversary of 
uh, this very day. Are there additional prayer concerns to be shared? Yes, Annie. Betty Bennett. We will pray for Betty. We, many of us know Betty, so thank you. Thank you. Other prayer concerns? Sorry. Yes. This is Loa. Well, we can pray for her safe journey. We will. And this is Lois. It's going. Okay. Thank you. Any other prayer concerns? Let us go to our in a time of prayer. O oh Lord, as we come to worship, open our hearts to your wondrous grace. Open our lives to your astounding love. We thank you that though we were lost, you have claimed us and named us, making us whole. Attentive God, how marvelous and complete is your care for us. You know us and our needs better than we know ourselves. We lift up to you all who have been named today and all who have special need of your restoring power and abundant grace. Bring reassurance to those who are anxious. Bring hope to those who are feeling hopeless. Give direction to those seeking guidance. Wrap in your loving arms all who are feeling unloved. And bring back into your fold those who have wandered from you. Lord, we pray for our nation, especially those who serve Particularly this day, we think of our firefighter, our police, our emergency personnel who were there on that fateful day and who continued to serve us in the years since and will continue to serve us in the years ahead. Keep them safe, right? Give them insight and wisdom and strength to do their duty in the communities and beyond and make us all supportive of, of all that they do. For indeed, they bring us true gifts of safety, of protection, and of being with us in our time. Lord, set before us this day your plan, your goodwill for our lives and for the world. Grant us the grace to embrace those outside our own circle and to see you in the faces of others. Help us to see you more clearly love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You'll turn to your love feast ode. We will sing now the, the opening hymn on the ode. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Let us stand as we sing together.
Please be seated. The litany for today is found as an insert in your bulletin. Lord our God, in you all things have their beginning, continuation, and end. Bless us with your presence, sustain us with your love, let us glorify you now and forever. God has promised, even in your old age, I am he. Even when you turn gray, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear. I will carry and will save. We celebrate God's promise to be close to us and to sustain us throughout our years. As the body of Christ, we recognize in our older adult members the gifts of wisdom that have come from witnessing and living through experiences of great change in our world. Celebrate the stability of being part of God's people in this fast changing world. Lord, you call each of us, your disciples, to fan into flame the gift of God within our hearts. You did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, love, and self discipline. Help us to recognize and develop our talents and give us the willing spirit to use them. Celebrate our gifts and talents. Lead us to the places where all of us may be used in purpose. Give us joy as we grow older as your disciples. Help us to find and follow new avenues of involvement, committing ourselves to serve Christ in the church and community. Lord, guide us to find fresh tasks to fill the hours of freedom on the day. Lead us to discover that older age can be full and satisfied. Lord, in the history of your people, you have called upon elders to bring about significant change. Abraham, Sarah, Elizabeth, Zechariah, Simeon, Anna, Moses, Miriam, and others. We acknowledge the leadership provided by the older adults among us. We give thanks and praise for your purpose. Gracious God, you have promised, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. We are grateful for the community of the leaders from which we draw strength to face the challenges of our freedom. We celebrate our church family, care and compassion of our congregation. Help us, O oh God, as we continually grow in faith, love, and hope. May we support If you will stand now and turn in your hymnals to hymn number 610, after which you may greet your fellow worshipers.
Let us join together in praying our Moravian blessing. Come, Lord Jesus, our guest to be, and bless these gifts bestowed by thee. Bless thy loved ones everywhere, and keep them in thy loving care. Amen.
What a wonderful service we have experienced so far. All our favorite hymns, love feasts. It's truly a grand occasion. We do thank the Fairview friends, formerly known as the Senior Friends, for helping with this love feast and everyone who's involved. I want to read this morning for our scripture passage the gospel lesson, which is from Luke 15th chapter. And I'll be reading the first 10 verses, if you would like to read along the Bibles that are in the view. Now, while the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him, and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents that over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repent. In the time of Jesus, the Jewish religious leaders were quick to divide the world into bad and good categories. There was evil, and then there was godly. There was unclean, and then there was clean. There was unrighteous, and then there was righteous. Those given the so-called bad label were people such as tax collectors and prostitutes and sinners. Those given the good label were folks such as the scribes and Pharisees. And so it's no wonder that these religious rulers in this passage from Luke grumbled about Jesus because Jesus ate and welcomed sinners. Jesus heard their grumbling, just as God hears our grumbling. And so he responded by telling not one, but two parables. The first one was about a shepherd with a hundred sheep. He lost one. And he leaves the other 99 behind in the wilderness and goes after the one that is lost until he finds the one that is lost. And he puts that one on his shoulders and he comes back to the flock and he gathers all his friends and neighbors and says, Rejoice with me for the one that was lost is now found. And then Jesus followed up with another parable about a woman with ten coins. She lost one of them, and she lights a lamp and sweeps the whole house, figuring it fell on the dirt floor of the house, and searches carefully until she finds it. And she is so excited about finding the one lost coin that she invites her neighbors over for a celebration and says to them, Rejoice with me. For I have found the coin that I had lost. These parables of Jesus teach us that all people are precious to God. If you don't remember anything else from this message, remember that. All people are precious to God, even the person who is the tax collector or the sinner. You see, it is God's nature to invite everyone in to his presence and to seek everyone out who has drifted away from his presence. It is God's great desire to find, to save, to celebrate, to bring the lost back home. These two parables show that when someone has rolled away from the faith, like the coin, or someone has become separated from the faith community, like the lost sheep, God springs into action. God desires that every person who is lost would be found. Every person is created in God's image and is precious to him. 
Today is the 15th anniversary of the terrorist attacks of September 11th, 2001. And one of the less publicized stories of 9-11 occurred after the Twin Towers were hit and people began to flee the island of Manhattan. We all can think back on that day and know where we were and how we responded to such a tragic thing. Transportation agencies on the island went into emergency mode and quickly closed down all bridges, tunnels, and commuter lines linking Manhattan to the mainland. The result of that was hundreds of thousands of people were trapped on the island of Manhattan. And what happened next was a spontaneous effort called the 9-11 boat lift, the largest maritime evacuation in history. As the Twin Towers fell, hundreds of vessels rushed toward the disaster. The ships included tugboats, ferries, fishing boats, and Coast Guard cutters. They took a huge risk in doing so because they did not know if the terrorist attacks would continue. No one knew at the time. And the captain of the Staten Island Ferry feared he might be next, and he was quoted as saying, we're a big orange target in the middle of that harbor. A boat captain named Vincent Ardolino was at home in Brooklyn watching the burning skyscrapers on television. According to the documentary, documentary that was done later entitled Boat Lift, he said, I've got to do something. So he dashed to his charter boat to go and help people. These two, along with hundreds of other mariners, headed for Manhattan in their boats and filled their boats with shock passengers. They ferried folks off the island and then returned to pick up more. Over 500,000 people were rescued from Manhattan in just nine hours. Not a single person was injured in that massive process. The boat lift was unplanned, it was unrehearsed, but it was enormously successful. Anyone who owned a boat, just about, out of the goodness of their heart and their care for their fellow human beings, went to the rescue of those who were on the island. It showed the heroism of regular folk who shared a common purpose in rescuing those who could be in danger. These mariners showed that every person was precious. Everyone deserved saving. Every human being in this world is part of God's family. God has an unwavering attachment to all of humanity and can't stand to see any of them, any of us, broken or lost. Nine out of ten is not good enough. You hear the parable. Ninety-nine out of a hundred is not good enough. For God, it has to be a hundred percent. For God, it is a hundred percent. Because every person is of infinite value to our maker, all are created in the image of God. This is what Jesus was saying through the parable. He heard the griping and the mumbling and the grumbling of the religious ruler. Did that stop him from accepting all kinds of people, from eating with a variety of folks, from making friends with people who the culture had deemed unworthy or unwelcome? No. By Jesus' words and action, he demonstrated how precious each one of us is to him. And that is God's way. God has an attachment to everyone who is created in his image. And whether we like it or not, God loves the very ones that perhaps we have not given any thought to. God loves the very ones that perhaps we don't think are very like. And if they are precious in God's sight, they should also be precious in our sight. As well. So, what is the message for us today from this parable, for these two parables? I think it has something to do with our identity and our purpose. Our identity is that we are beloved children of God, each one of us. And so, part of our purpose, part of our calling, is to search for the lost sheep and help return those sheep to the fold. It is searching for that lost coin to return it to its proper place. It is following the example of our Lord and Savior. 
If you hear this message and perhaps count yourself as one of the lost, that is, if you don't know God or don't know if you belong in God's family, I can assure you that you are precious in His sight. He lovingly created you just the way you are, and there is no other like you. No one else can take your place. You are of indescribable worth, God. And God will go anywhere in the universe to draw you, to draw us close to Him again. He will not stop until you are found until we are found. And when God draws you close again, God himself will be so relieved and so excited that all of heaven will join in the celebration. You pick that up in the parable in the read. All of heaven will join in the celebration when one who has been lost has been found again. This is the good news. This is the gospel for us today and every day. You bow your heads with me for prayer. Loving God, you call us to be your people and to follow your paths of acceptance and peace. You set before us the way that leads to life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You wrap your loving arms around each of us as your precious children. May we, in all aspects of our lives, elevate love for you, your ways, and all your children as our highest goal, as our highest calling. This we pray in the name of Christ, our good shepherd, our friend, and our Savior. Amen. turn to our love feast ode to sing the final hymn blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in christian love let us stand as we sing